Hey folks, PK here. For those who have been with my channel for a long time, you know I crab a lot. And I usually set a GoPro in my crab pots when I go. I have quite a bit of unused underwater videos that just sits there on my PC hard drive. And so here is one video I took a few days ago while crabbing in Walport. I'm always curious as how the crabs get into my pots, how they behave. And I actually learned a lot watching these videos. It's also kind of cool to see wildlife under the ocean. The camera that I use is always a GoPro. Uh, they work really well. They're waterproof down to about 30 feet. Now 30 feet is not very deep at all guys. So you have to be really aware of your depth when you do this. I've lost about 6 or 7 GoPros already doing this. Um, just mostly through my carelessness. And I'm think, I think I'm on like my 16th GoPro. Regardless, I still do it because I love these type of videos. And 30 foot is the maximum depth that I shoot for. Now you can probably find housing cases that go deeper, but I notice like anything over 30 feet, I lose a lot of light. Oh, and if you just saw that, somehow the camera moved. I think what happened is the crab was um, touching it when he kind of went by the camera. I don't think the camera is very strong. It's on a swivel base and so it's easy to get bumped. So again, that's again is something I learned and it's something I'll have to compensate for next time because uh, <laughs> you think these guys have eyes. They know where they're going, but it, it seems like they don't. Many things can go wrong when you're doing these types of videos. So just, you know, you just got to go along with it. But it's fine, you know, it's that random accident that makes it kind of cool. As for lighting the pots to make the crab more visible, on cloudy days or rainy days, you're not going to get a lot of light. Um, even like 15 foot, um, it just depends. If it's cloudy, there's hardly any light at all and the video is very dark. So what I do is I attach an LED light to the mount just under the GoPro so that way I can see <coughs> excuse me see the crap better my older underwater videos were really dark and they're hard to see and as I do more of it I realize it's best to attach an LED light so you can shine on the pot and see the crap and it's just better to illuminate the foreground and the background and sometimes it depends on the water clarity too. As you can see in this video, you got a lot of debris floating. So that makes it kind of murky and it's hard to see. But if I didn't have the LED light on, this would, this video, you know, I really couldn't use. It'd be way too dark. But because of that LED light, um, you can see it shine when the fish swim by. So that's, that's why if you do this, I recommend an LED light. As for the angle, sometime I have an up close shot. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen that before where I have the, the camera mounted right inside the crab pot. Um, this one is mounted outside. You can see that the PVC pipe that acts as a boom. And I put the camera right on that boom. So the camera is outside the pot. And it's, it's too bad that camera angle here isn't very good because, uh, as you saw, that pretty sadistic crab bumped into my camera and moved it. But it's still pretty clear. You can kind of see outside the pot to one side at least. And here's a big one right here crawling out. The, boy, man, that, that was a big one. I mean, it. The, what happens with the GoPro is it has such a wide angle. So it the foreground is pushed f back backward. So... The, the crabs in the video here are actually pretty big. Um, but because of the wide angle of the GoPro, they actually look small. That's just a, that's just a nature of wide angle lenses. Um, they just push your foreground into the background. I don't know, I don't know if that makes sense, but what you could do to prevent this is you can have the setting just be a wide angle or a normal angle, but the problem with that is you're not getting a panorama shot so you're missing a lot of the action on the side and on the top and on the bottom and as you can see here the uh, salmon smolts those are the fish swimming around 
I Googled it and I asked a friend and I did some research. I thought those were sardines. A friend of mine said they were herring, but I think I'm pretty sure those are uh, salmon smolts. Um, a friend, uh, I asked a friend and he said he, he knows a biologist for the state of Oregon and he did confirm those small fish swimming around. Those are salmon smolts. So that's kind of cool. It's good to see th that healthy population there. And let's focus on the lower right corner. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see these dover soles. They're a flatfish, and these soles are right on the lower right corner on, on the ground, on the sand. They're just swimming there. There's quite a bit of them. What they're doing is um, they're just feeding on the the bait debris that's coming from the pot as the crab feed on the bait the chicken little tiny debris float in the water and that's what those soles are feeding on now the soles they're pretty small uh, but I heard from what I uh, gather from reading on the internet is that they're really tasty so one of these days I want to try to catch them oh there's another one you see that it just came out from the bottom that was a big sole but uh, I'm going to have to put on like a size 100 hook and maybe a piece of uh, chicken or or fish and try to catch those soles because I want to try to cook with them. Um, maybe even like a small herring jig. You know, given their small size, I'd imagine I have to catch quite a bit just to get a meal. But yeah, that looks like it's something I want to do in the future. Um, wow, as you can see, there's a lot of salmon smolt swimming around there. And just look at the pot now. Look how full it is. There's one giant crab at the top, and more are trying to get in. But the problem is, because the pot is so full, they can't get in. There's really no way more crab can fit in there. See, it's just, it's just packed. And pretty big crabs, too. Now I put down the pot, I believe it was under one hour, just under one hour. And as you can see, it's pretty packed. So, but they can't escape because <laughs> there's just so many in there. <laughs> None of it can move. There's no crab in there that can move. Okay, they kind of got themselves in a bind. And the crazy thing is, it's like late July, usually from my experience, you know, I've been crabbing for about 30 years here in Oregon. I've never had it this good before crabbing in early July. This this was a phenomenal trip. And as you can see to the right of the video on the ocean floor, there are lots of crabs just crawling around. So this was definitely a good spot. And I'm guessing this fall, fall 2020, is just going to be really good crabbing. And I'm basing that just on our preliminary catch in late July here. Okay, folks, so that's about it for this video. And I'm going to speed it up a little bit because we are about to lift the pot. And you'll see uh, just what happens as we lift it up. It's kind of cool. All right, folks, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Have fun fishing and crabbing. Tight lines.